Hi, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to solve polynomial congruence of higher degree using Fermer's little theorem. So, let's start with the different types of polynomial congruence. Look at the first congruence, 2x plus 5 is congruent to 0 mod 11. It's a linear congruence. 3x square plus 2x plus 5 is congruent to 0 mod 11, which is a quadratic congruence. In the third congruence, you see the degree of the congruence is 3. We have x cubed minus 7x plus c, uh, 6 is congruent to 0 mod of 30. And in the fourth congruence, we have the degree as 24. So, all these congruences which higher degree they may or may not be solvable. Look at the first and second congruence. We have already studied how these congruences are solved. The first one is a linear congruence. We can use the method of Diophantine equations to solve that. And the second one is a quadratic congruence. You can watch my other videos on these topics to understand them. Let's move on. To the higher degree poly, uh, congruence, polynomial congruences. The first method which we will handle here in part 1 is where the powers are larger than the modulus and the modulus is prime. So in such a case we can use Fermat's little theorem which we know states that if p is prime then x to the power p minus 1 is always congruent to 1 mod of p. Now, for this, uh, we will start to explain this. Let's start with an example. If we are asked to solve a congruence, x to the power 24 plus x to the power 13 plus x is congruent to 0 mod of 7. Now, we see that this is a polynomial congruence of degree 24. To solve this, first of all, we notice that the modulus is 7, which is prime. So we can safely use our Fermer's little theorem. For brevity, we would be addressing it as FLT. Now, now this will give us x to the power 6 is congruent to 1 mod of 7. You can see it is x to the power p minus 1. If you raise, let's see, x to the power 24, the first term in our congruence is x to the power 24, which we can always write as x to the power 6 to the power 4. Now, x to the power 6 is congruent to 1. So, this, if we raise it to the power 4 on both, both the sides, we'll get our x to the power 24 is congruent to 1 mod 7. And x to the power 13, the second term, can be written as x into x to the power 12. We see that this will be congruent to 1, so we are left with x to the power 13 is congruent to x mod of 7. Now, our congruence 5 reduces to, this will be replaced by 1, this is replaced by x, and we already have an x here. So, this gives us 1 plus 2x is congruent to 0 mod of 7. Using our methods, method for solving linear congruence, we see that such a congruence has a solution, general solution, x is equal to 3 plus 70, where t values can vary from here. If you want to check whether your answer is correct or not, t to be 0, you will get x is equal to 3. If x is equal to 3 is satisfied here, the congruence will be satisfied. Let us solve another example. Now, in the second example, we have a congruence x to the power 26 plus x to the power 13 plus 1, which is congruent to 0 mod of 13. Again, the moduli, modulus is 13 and it is prime, so we can use FLT. We'll get x to the power 12 is congruent to 1 mod of 13. And 
if we go to the first term in our congruence, that is x to the power 26, which we can write as x to the power 24 into x squared. As x to the power 24 will be congruent to 1 mod 13, we get x to the power 26 is congruent to x square mod of 13. And x to the power 13, which is the second term, that we can write as x into x to the power 12. As this term is congruent to 1, we get x to the power 13 is congruent to x mod of 13. Now the congruence, original congruence reduces to x square plus x plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod of 13. We can use our method of solving quadratic congruence and this will give us two solutions x is congruent to 3 mod 13 and x is congruent to 9 mod 13. For solving a quadratic congruence you can refer to my videos on how we solve. There are different methods which have been described there. Let's take another example. In this example, we have a polynomial x to the power 35 plus 2x to the power 19 plus 3x cube is congruent to 0 mod of 17. Now, as the modulus is again prime, we can use the Fermat's little theorem and that will give us x to the power 16 is congruent to 1 mod 13. The first term x to the power 35 becomes x to the power 32 into x cube, which gives us x to the power 35 is congruent to x to the power 3 mod of 17. And x to the power 19 can be written as x to the power 3 into x to the power 16. This will be congruent to 1 from our Fermat's little theorem. So we are left with x to the power 19 is congruent to x cube mod 13. Now if you substitute these two, we will get in the original congruence x cube plus 2x cube plus 3x cube is congruent to 0 mod 17. Now this gives us 6 x cube is congruent to 0 mod 17. You know that all multiples of x, uh, all, for all values of x equal to 17 t, that is multiples of 17 satisfy this congruence. What happens? when a modulus is not prime. So can we solve? Yes, of course we can solve. And in such a case, we split our moduli. The modulus is composite. Look at this example. In such a case, we will now reduce it into a system of congruence. As the modulus is not prime, we cannot use the Fermat's little theorem. So let us write this congruence as a system of congruence. We've split 6 as 2 into 3 and this gives us two congruences. The first congruence in the system reduces to 3x congruent to 0 mod 2 on using the Fermat's little theorem like we did in the previous examples and the second one on using the theorem Fermat's little theorem reduces to 2x plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 3. Now, this gives us x is congruent to 1 mod 3 and this gives us x is congruent to uh, th 0 mod of 2. Now, so we get these two congruences from a system. If we use the Chinese remainder theorem as both the moduli, both the modulus are prime, we get the solution as x is equal to 4 plus 60, where t values can, t can be from 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, etc. So, in this part 1, we used Fermat's little theorem to solve the higher degree polynomials. But in that case, but you have to remember, it works when our modulus, when the powers, when the degree is greater than the modulus. In the second part, we will use method of factorization to solve such higher degree congruences. Thank you for watching. Hi, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to solve 
polynomial congruences of higher degree using Fermat's little theorem. Let's start with what exactly are polynomial congruences. Here I have listed a few examples. Let's look at the first one. 2x plus 5 is congruent to 0 mod of 11. It's a linear congruence and we can always solve it using Diophantine equations. The second example, 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 is congruent to 0 mod 11. It's a quadratic congruence and we have done methods for solving such congruences. You can always check my videos on how they are solved. The third example gives us a congruence x cubed minus 7x plus 6 is congruent to 0 mod of 13. And the fourth one is x to the power 24 plus 2x to the power 11 plus 5 is congruent to 0 mod of 7. The third and fourth example no doubt have degree greater than equal to 3. So how do we solve such congruences if the solution exists? You may note that all congruences not always have a solution. So for polynomial congruences which have degree greater than equal to 3, we can always use Fermat's little theorem. The first method which we are going to do is when the powers are larger than the prime modulus and for such cases we use Fermat's little theorem which states that our x to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod of p, where p is some prime integer. Let's look at the example 1. Here we are asked to solve a congruence x to the power 24 plus x to the power 13 plus x is congruent to 0 mod of 7. The modulus is prime, it's 7. So we can safely use Fermat's little theorem. For brevity, we will address it as FLT. Now the theorem gives us x to the power 6 is congruent to 1 mod of 7. If we raise this to 4 on both the sides, we'll get x to the power 24 and that we know will be congruent to 1 mod of 7. So first term is taken care of. Let's look at the second term, x to the power 13. Now x to the power 13 can be written as x into x to the power 12 and as x to the power 12 will be congruent to 1 which we get by raising x to the power 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7 by a power 2 on both the sides. This becomes congruent to 1 so we are left with x to the power 13 is congruent to x mod of 7. Now our original congruence reduces to we'll replace this by 1 from here. And we'll replace x to the power 13 by x from here. And this x is just copied as it is. So we get 1 plus 2x is congruent to 0 mod of 7. Or 2x is congruent to minus 1 mod of 7. This is a linear congruence. We can use the method of Diophantine equation. And that will give us the general solution as x is equal to 3 plus 7. You can check that different values of t we get our solution x. Let's look at another example. Here we have been asked to solve x to the power 26 plus x to the power 13 plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod of 13. Here the modulus is again prime. So we can use our Thomas little theorem and that gives us x to the power 12 is congruent to 1 mod of 13. Now the first term x to the power 26 can be written as x to the power 24 into x square and as this will be congruent to 1, this you get by raising this power 2 on both the sides. So you get x to the power 26 as congruent to x square mod of 13. And the second term x to the power 13, that can be written as x into x to the power 12 which is congruent to x mod of 13. So the original congruence reduces to x square plus x plus 1 which is congruent to 0 mod of 13. Now this is a quadratic congruence so we can use the method of solving quadratic congruences and 
that will give us two solutions x is equal to 3 mod 13 and x is congruent to 9 mod 13. Both these solutions will satisfy our original congruence. You can always check the video, my videos on how quadratic congruences are solved. Come to example number 3. Here we've been asked to solve x to the power 35 plus 2 x to the power 19 plus 3 x cube is congruent to 0 mod of 13. Again, the modulus is prime, so we can use the Fermat's little theorem, and that gives us x to the power 16 is congruent to 1 mod of 17. So the first term becomes x to the power 35 is congruent to x cube mod 17. The second term x to the power 19 becomes congruent to x cube mod of 13. We've used the method what we have applied in our previous two examples. And now this gives our congruence as x cube plus 2x cube plus 3x cube is congruent to 0 mod of 17. Now this gives us 6x cube. You can add them. That is congruent to 0 mod 17. Such a congruence you can see has a solution x is equal to 17t. That is all multiples of x will satisfy such a solution for t value 0 is equal to plus minus 1 plus minus 2. So what happens when a modulus is not prime? Let's look at example 4. In such a case here, you see that the modulus is 6, which is a composite number. And 6 we can always write as 2 into 3. So now that gives us a system of congruence. So we are reducing this original congruence into a system of congruence x to the power 24 plus x to the power 13 plus x is congruent to 0 mod of 2 and x to the power 24 plus x to the power 13 plus x is congruent to 0 mod of 3. Now, to each congruence, we'll apply the methods we have used so far using our Fermer's Little Theorem. The first congruence x to the power 24 plus x to the power 13 plus x is congruent to 0 mod 2. That's this one. On using Fermer's Little Theorem, gives us 3x is congruent to 0 mod of 2. And the second congruence here, this gives us, on using Fermer's Little Theorem, 1 plus 2x is congruent to 0 mod of 3. We can further simplify and this will give us x is congruent to 1 mod 3. So both of these two congruences have given us a system of congruences. 3x is congruent to 0 mod 2 and x is congruent to 1 mod 3. You can see that here the modulus are relatively prime. So Chinese remainder theorem can always be used. And on solving, you get the solution x is equal to 4 plus 60. For different values of t, you get different solution. Or you can say different values of x. Chinese remainder theorem, again, you can check my video on how it is solved. So here, we have focused on how we can solve higher degree polynomial congruences using Fermat's little theorem. In our next video, in part 2, we will use the method of factorization for solving such con polynomial congruences. Thank you for watching.